You're an atheist? I am definitely an atheist, yes. Now, why are you an atheist? Because there is no God. Are you an atheist? Uh, yeah. I am an atheist, yeah. I am, yes. I am. I don't believe in the... There's a guy in the sky that lives in the sky. You believe in evolution? Of course I do, yes. We don't need to invoke any supernatural force or power to account for the development of life through time on Earth. You know, the, the problem with those who are unable to see evolution I think is they don't have imaginations. Do you think it's a belief? I think it's just fact. I think more like facts. There is too much evidence to ignore. Do you think it's a belief? No, it's science. It's the way it happened. It's logical. You know, all the scientists pretty much agree with it. It's, it's more of a fact. When did you start to believe? When I started to think for myself. When I took my first biology class. It all started to make a lot of sense. I generally trust the scientific community. It makes more sense than any religion or anything. I believe in science. What's your major here at this university? Biology. Your biology major? Yeah. You believe in evolution? Yes. What's your major? Geology. Chemistry? Biochemistry. Environmental science and policy. I'm a physicist. Biochemistry. Okay, do you believe in evolution? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Of course. Yes, I do. I do believe in evolution. Yes. A scientific method is based on the collection of data through observation and experimentation. Science Daily. Could you give me some observable evidence that evolution is true? Uh, something I don't have to uh, receive by faith. Yeah. Some observable evidence. I mean, take a look at what happened 65 million years ago. Oh, hang on, I can't. That's 65 million years ago. I believe, t yeah, millions of years. So that can't be observed. We can trace the evolution through the fossil record. Could you be specific? Just give me one. Um, uh, between six and seven million years ago. Hundreds of thousands to millions of years? So it's quite a long time. Yes. Millions of years. Yes. So it can't be observed. Evolution is, is not testable over time. We are condemned to live only for a few decades. And that's too slow, too small a time scale to see evolution going on. Richard Dawkins. We see nothing of these slow changes in progress until the hand of time has marked the lapse of ages. Charles Darwin. I don't want something I have to accept by faith. I want it to be observable. Observable evidence. Well, I mean, if you're just asking me here on the street, there's not really much I can tell you in terms of observable evidence. Like, we would have to really examine existing data to draw conclusions of our own. I would have to have faith in... We would have to have some amount of faith. Can you think of any observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? I don't really believe there's any proof for that yet. I know that everyone talks about the missing link for humans and whatnot. I believe that there are connections that are out there that we haven't found yet. I'm gonna trust what those experts did, those experts uh, came up with. I have a strong trust in evolutionary ideas based on the evidence presented. I haven't seen it myself, but I believe what the textbooks tell me about it, so. You've got faith in the experts? I have faith in the experts, yeah. I guess similar to how religious people have faith that God actually exists, I have faith in the experts knowing what they're talking about. I would point to, as one great example is, look at the genetics of the stickleback. What's that? Uh, so stickleback fish are a very interesting collection of species that were recently isolated after the end of the Ice Age. What have they become? They're, they're various species of sticklebacks. They stayed as fish? Well, of course. Can you think of any observable evidence where there was a change of kinds? Fish. Human beings are still fish. Human beings are fish? Why, yes, of course they are. How long did that take? A couple of billions of years. Millions. A couple of millions? Yep. How is that observable? It's not. We came out of the ground as a mammal, and one mammal created... Come out of the ground? Didn't we come out of the sea? Huh? Well, initially in the beginning, we came out of the ground and the sea after the great destruction of the... the so do we have lungs or gills when we came out of the sea? You want to know something? Those that were in the sea, I guess, had gills, and those that were on land had lungs. But if we came out of the sea, we had oh, gills want, in the sea. You want to know something? Who knows that we came out of the sea or we came out, we evolved from mammals? So you don't know? Huh? Of course I don't know. I'm accepting that they did their science correctly. Could you give me an example of Darwinian evolution, not adaptation or speciation, but a change of kinds? <laughs> These are changes of kinds. They're still fish. They're distinctly different fish. We have thousands of examples. Give me, can you give me one? I can give you, I can give you thousands. Just one. one. For instance, I would say, uh, look at Lenski's experiments with bacteria then. 
So what do the bacteria become? The bacteria are still bacteria, of course. So that's not Darwinian evolution. That's not a change of kinds, is it? It, it is a change. It is a change in the genetic makeup of the bacteria, which is still bacteria. So what do the bacteria become? Uh, a new kind of bacteria. So it's still bacteria. There's no change of kinds. You said before that there are there is lots of evidence for evolution. I just want one observable evidence for Darwinian evolution. Yeah, no, just one. But I gave you some. You don't want. Not some. I want one. Wait, you don't want that. I want one. Said, not, yes, well, I do. I'm pleading no, with you people. Said, you asked me to tell you. You asked me to tell you when I've watched one species evolve into another. Isn't that right? No, one kind into another. There's 14. Is it 14 different definitions of species? So I want a change of kind. So could you give me any examples of Darwinian evolution? Well, uh, when you say examples of that, then you have to sort of look at over a longer time frame. It has nothing to do with faith. Faith is something that I have to unseen. I have to believe in. That's it. Unseen. Look. Right. Do you believe evolution? Of course I do. Are you a believer in evolution? Yes, I am. When did you start to believe evolution? I started to believe evolution when I started to think out for myself. Is evolution a belief? Evolu evo well, you know something, evolution is a, is a thought process, is, is coming to terms and, and, and checking out all the, alterna all the alternatives, like uh, taking a look at the, the religion, man-made religions. Let me ask you again, is evolution a belief? No, evolution is, well yeah, in a, in a word, yeah, I could say it, w it could be a belief. When you say change of kinds, you mean the evolution of one species from another or to another. Yes, we have that in action actually in the Galapagos. Could you give me one instance? Yes, we have an example from a group of birds called Darwin's finches. And you take a look at the difference between the finches on the islands that all started out. I mean, that's very, very observed. But that's not Darwinian evolution. There's been no change of kinds. What do the finches become? They become genetically new and anatomically new, recognizably different species. So they're still finches? Well, of course, there's still finches. Yes, so there's no change. Of, there's no change of kind. Little birds that he uh, that he had observed. That oh, what did they become? Um, their beaks, their beak shapes. They're their still colors. birds. Yes, three finches that turn into different types of birds. Based they're on still the finches. Beak. Well, for example, Darwin and and his study on evolution of uh, the birds on the island that he went on to there. Their beaks changed. Their beaks. Uh, but they're still birds. There's no change of kinds. That's within no, 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 the kind. Evolution on the beaks. That's so that's called adaptation. It's not Darwinian evolution. There's no change of kinds. There's no different animal involved. I want something that shows me Darwin's belief in a change of kinds is scientific. Darwin spoke of a change of kind. Can you think of any observable evidence for Darwinian evolution where there's a change of kind? Uh, <laughs> change of kind. Change of kind. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that one a little longer. You give me anything that I can see, observe, and test, which is a scientific method for Darwinian evolution, a change of kinds. Test and observe. Could you give me observable evidence, which is a scientific method for Darwinian evolution, a change of kinds? to think about it. <laughs> um, so you want the evidence of it? I would say... I cannot, I think. Um. Could you give me any observable evidence, just one, for Darwinian evolution. Yeah, let me think about that for a sec. Um, hmm. Observable evidence, something where we don't have to exercise faith. Something that can be observed, like the scientific process, observable. Hmm, that's a good question. That one I'm not quite sure. So you can't think of any observable evidence for evolution? No. How do you know it's true? Hmm. I'm not sure. So Darwinian evolution is not observable, it's not scientific. I guess so. So it's unscientific, you can't prove it. It is scientific actually, you could prove it, it could be proven, just... Do it for me. Ah, that's hard, I don't got, I don't... 
it's just that's just too broad of a of it's unobservable that's why you need millions of years yes exactly well, you're trusting the biology majors and the biology professors know what they're talking about yeah, and, and they can't even give me a, they can't even give me evidence of a change of kinds well i'm well then there isn't one if they don't give it then i don't i wouldn't say there was yeah. i just go on what i've seen and what i've learned from class. so you believe yeah you know what that's called what blind faith blind faith <laughs> Faith is the great cop-out, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. Richard Dawkins. Do you believe in intelligent design? Of course not. Do you believe a rose is intelligently designed? Definitely not. Could you make a rose from nothing? No. I, I can't, honestly. Why not? Me, I just, I have no supernatural abilities. I can't. Why not? I don't have millions, billions of years. Th that's, that's not possible. So how could you say everything's not intelligently designed? Where does that leave you on the scale of intelligence if you say everything's not intelligently designed and you can't even make a rose? There was nothing in the beginning, big explosion of nothing, it became something and then it came into a rose. And giraffes and horses and cows. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying that, that that's what happened. I'm just saying I don't know what happened. That's what, that's what, that's what scientists are, are, are have theorized has happened. And you believe them? To a point. So you've got faith? That is true, yeah. I would consider myself an atheist, yeah. Can you think of any famous atheists? Uh, I believe um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, I can't agree to the claims by atheists that I'm one of that community. Oh, start with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton said, The most beautiful system of the sun, planets and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. This is a popular atheist poster on which are Ernest Hemingway, Abraham Lincoln, Carl Sagan, Mark Twain, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Albert Einstein and Charles Darwin, along with the words, atheism, good enough for these idiots. Clearly, atheism is for intellectuals. But one moment, Abraham Lincoln wasn't an atheist. He said, I know that the Lord is always on the side of the right, but it's my constant anxiety and prayer that I and this nation should be on the Lord's side. Neither was Carl Sagan. He clearly stated, I am an agnostic. Mark Twain hated religion, but he certainly wasn't an atheist, saying, none of us can be as great as God, but any of us can be as good. Benjamin Franklin said, God governs in the affairs of men. You'll find Thomas Edison listed on celebrity atheists, on positive atheism, and other atheist websites, but he wasn't an atheist. He said, there is a great directing head of people and things, a supreme being who looks after the destinies of the world. Thomas Jefferson said, say nothing of my religion. It is known to myself and my God alone. Albert Einstein rejected the Bible as the word of God and said that the creator was unknowable and that God being personal was childlike. He lamented, in view of such harmony in the cosmos, which I, with my limited human understanding, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. Well, what really makes me angry is that they quote me to support such views. He categorically said, I am not an atheist. And when referring to those who deny the Creator, he used the term fanatical atheists. Charles Darwin said, I have never been an atheist. You have a dog? Yes. Love your dog? I do love my dog. Yes, I do. I love animals. Okay. Well, your pet dog and your rotten neighbor are drowning. You can only save one of them. Who would you save? I mean, you, you would want to save the animal, so I would want to, I would want to save my dog. I'll, I think I would save my dog. Mm, I'll save my dog. So, is your neighbor not worth saving? Well, he's not worth saving more than my dog is. I'd go with the dog. Yeah. Well, we're animals, I believe we're all equal. I don't think humans have, like, a higher, like, place. So, you think uh, dogs are more valuable than human beings? Do you believe in evolution? Yes, I do. I so, do. it's just a matter of survival of the fittest. Your neighbor's a, a primate, and you've got a canine, and you like the canine more than you like the primate. Would that be right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's survival of the fittest. I mean, um, survival of the fittest? Yeah, pretty much. You said you believe in evolution. Mm -hmm. So, it's just a matter of survival of the fittest. Yeah. If he drowns, he drowns. Big yeah. deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> are you an atheist? Uh, yeah. Any fetus is less human than an adult pig. Richard Dawkins. So you don't think God exists? Um, more like I know. But you're a living,
biological human being with a life of God in you. We are a mechanical being because we have different parts that Is work. there no life in you? Yes, there's life in me. That's your soul. Okay, can you handle some questions? They're pretty pointed questions. Sure. Are you a good person? Are you going to make it to heaven? Um, I would like to think so. Do I think I'm a good person? Yeah. Are you a good person, morally? Yes, I am. Do you think you're a good person? Yes. I like to believe so, yeah. How many lies have you told in your whole life? I wouldn't be able to count. I don't know if I can remember. How many lies do you think you've told in your whole life? Oh, quite a few. Countless. Uncountable. What would you call me if I told lots of lies? Countless lies. You'd call me a liar, wouldn't you? Of course. What do you call someone who's told thousands of lies? A liar. So what are you? I'm a liar. Have you ever stolen something in your whole life, even if it's small? Yes, I have. Have you ever taken something that belonged to someone else? Of course. Sure. Yes, I have. It's called theft. So what are you? A liar and a thief. I'm a liar and a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Oh, every day. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Oh, all the time. Have you ever used God's name in vain? It's probably so. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yep. I have indeed. It's called blasphemy. It's very serious to use God's name as a cuss word. I don't believe in blaspheming since I don't believe in God. So if you don't believe in God, how can you blaspheme? Well, if I don't believe in certain laws and still violate them, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So we're still guilty even though we deny a law exists or we even don't know about it. One to go, and I appreciate your honesty, Jacob. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Why, yes, I look at many women with lust in my heart. Of course. Have you ever looked at a guy with lust? Oh, yeah. Sure. Not recently. I have indeed. Are you looking at pornography? Yes. Are you lusting after women, see? Of course. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Absolutely. So, Peter, by your own admission, you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. And that's only four of the Ten Commandments. What I'm saying to you is just not believing in hell doesn't make it go away. A judge must see that justice is done if he's a good judge, and it's the same with God. If we die in our sins, God will give us justice. The Bible says no thief, no liar, no fornicator, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. So, Julia, if you died in your sins and God gave you justice because he's holy and perfect morally, you'd end up in hell, and I'd hate that to happen to you. Man, would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? Probably not, no. Both for a hundred million? No, I value seeing too much. So see how precious your eyes are to you. How much more precious is your life? And you're saying, I don't care if I get damned from all that which is good. Of course you care. You've got a will to live. Now let me tell you something you know intuitively. You know that creation is proof of the Creator. You know God exists, and the reason you choose evolution is because it gets rid of moral accountability. Evolution... It does like get rid of moral accountability. It does. It means you, your primal instincts, lust and pornography and fornication, adultery, all just primal instincts. That's all. You're just an animal. The Bible demands moral accountability and says those things are wrong, and that's why it's not acceptable to you. That's why you're not seeking after truth. Am I wrong? <sighs> I say that you know intuitively the creation is proof of the Creator. God has given you that inner light. So when you look at the genius of God's creative hand, you know He exists because of creation. You are a unique human being, made in the image of God with a sense of justice and truth and righteousness. God gave you a conscience. It's inherent. It's shaped by society, but it's inherent. You know right from wrong. You have violated His law, and I don't want you to end up in hell. James, if you put your finger on it and see if we can, your struggle at the moment is because of your love of sin because of the pleasure that sin gives you and you don't want to give it up. You're like a man with a, a money belt filled with gold who's just fallen into the ocean. And I'm saying, if you don't get rid of that belt that weighs 80 pounds, it's going to take you under. It doesn't matter how much pleasure it gives you, it's not worth losing your life for. Gail, you're not a beast. You are a human being created by God in His image with dignity and worth and purpose. Now, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Any idea? Mm -mm. No. Well, God became a human being 2,000 years ago. Jesus of Nazareth, and he suffered and died on a cross, taking the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I violated God's law, and Jesus paid our fine. That means God can legally dismiss our case because of the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Savior. God can say you're out of here because someone paid your fine. And then what God can now do is clothe us in the righteousness of Christ. So on Judgment Day, you're saved from God's wrath and His justice because of the death and resurrection of the Savior. If you repent and trust in Him, God will give you a righteous standing in His eyes. He'll wash away your sins in an instant. And He'll grant you the gift of everlasting life. His last words on the cross were, it is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. He came to take our punishment upon Himself. So because our fine was paid by another, God can legally dismiss your case. 
it's very hard to believe that someone would be willing to pay off the debts that's not his own. As in, yeah, well, the Bible says God is love. Yes. You know, and he's kind and generous and, and merciful, and in his great kindness, he became a human being and suffered for us. Does that make sense? Makes sense, yeah. How old are you? I'm 22. When are you going to die? I have no idea. Well, God knows exactly the moment of your death, and it could be tonight, could be tomorrow. I'm not using scare tactics, this is just straight reality. 150,000 people every 24 hours die, and they're all making plans for next week, no doubt. So please think about this. Do you have a Bible at home? No. I'm not talking about a religion that says you've got to strive to get to heaven. I'm telling you the Bible says heaven is a free gift of God. You cannot earn everlasting life. doesn't matter how religious you are, how good you are. God commended his love toward us and that while we had sinners, Christ died for us. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death. And this is how the Bible puts it. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, least any man boast. So eternal life is a free gift of God, and it comes because of God's mercy, not because of anything we do. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Do you have a Bible at home? Yeah, yes. I've been reading the Bible every day for more than 40 years. There's no mistakes in it, Mike. Any mistakes that we think are our mistakes. And you can trust God's Word. I mean, think of how you trust professors and science books that tell you you're a, you're a primate. You trust and believe that, so how much more should you trust a God who cannot lie? Let me show you how fallible we are. Spell the word shop. 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 S-H-O-P. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. Green light. Oh. <laughs> so we're all fallible. We make mistakes. So imagine if you're making a mistake when you say this whole of creation came together because some explosion of nothing that produced everything, seasons, the birds, the trees, the flowers, the sun, the moon, the stars, and the marvels of the human body. So are you going to think about this? Oh yeah, no, I, I think about this quite a lot, believe me. I, my brother, like I said, he's a hardcore Christian. He's going to Yale Divinity School right now, so he talks to me about this all the time. And so you've got to think seriously about this. Life is full of decisions. Soften your heart. Don't have so much blind faith in what science tells you and has left you without any knowledge of what was in the beginning anyway. You haven't got a clue where you come from. You don't know what you're doing here on Earth, and you don't know what happens after, he, after you die. Peter, uh, could you be wrong about God's existence? Yes, and could you be wrong about God's existence? No. Well. Then, then I think you're rather close-minded. Well, if I said to you, um, could you be wrong about your wife's existence, you'd say, no, I know her. You'd say, don't be ridiculous, I know her and love her. And I know the Lord, and I love the Lord, and He transformed my life 41 years ago, instantly, overnight, forgave my sins and gave me new desires, when I had no desires or thoughts of God for the whole 22 years before I was a Christian. Mike, thanks for talking to me, I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, no problem, thank you. Peter, you've been a good sport, thank you very much for talking to me. Okay. So you're going to think about this? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think about it a lot, actually. Like I, I think about I think about death and how fragile life is, and how just in a second, I, it, it could all be over and there'd be nothing.